Hello everyone, and this is Bio Phoenix here. And because it's October now, we're taking a look at some horror-themed games. And the first one we're taking a look at here is Dark Arms Beast Buster on the Neo Geo Pocket Color, which is a handheld system that I have not done a review on any of the games yet until now. So Dark Arms Beast Buster was developed by Noise Factory and published by SNK, and it was released in 1999 in all regions. And it is interesting to note that this game is actually a spin-off to another game that is just called Beast Buster. And that game is a light gun game for the arcade, where this one is an action RPG. So anyways, let's talk about the story. So it begins that your character has found access to a parallel world that happens to lead to, well, the Dark World. So when you're in there, you get to meet the master of the Dark World and you end up making a pact with him. So after you name your character whatever you want, he says, oh, you won't be needing that down here, meaning that naming your character is kind of pointless. So after that, he ends up giving you a gun called a Capture. So obviously the Capture gun captures monsters, but you also gotta feed your gun these monsters, which seems a little bit strange. And well, yeah, it is very strange, but I kind of like it. So after that, you get to wander around and do whatever the hell you want. So at the beginning of the game, there's not really much story, in fact, there's actually not much of a story within this game, you're kinda just like going around taking out some monsters going through night and day. And the master of the dark world serves as your helper, because he serves as the weapon creator and the weapon feeder. So yeah, for an RPG, there really isn't not much of a story here. So if you're one of those people that really likes playing RPGs for the story, then yeah, this will probably be a little bit disappointing for you then. So now, let's start talking about the gameplay. So the first place that you start is like your safe house. And like I already said, the master is the guy that gets to help you out. Then you got a bed to rest in which regains your health and makes some of the time go by faster. And then you have a skull where every time you move up to it, it actually moves its head which is kind of creepy looking. But the purpose of the skull is that it allows you to save your game. So after you leave the safe house, you got a map and you can go to different places. Of course at the beginning of the game, you only have one place to go to. Now, it is important to note that there is a night and day cycle within this game, and there is differences between night and day. So not only is there different monsters that appear depending on the time that you go to the area, but mostly at night, the monsters are much stronger. And depending on the time of day, you can actually access different areas that you can't normally access on the opposite day. So you're gonna walk around, capture, or kill some monsters, and the more times you use your gun, they will gain EXP. But your main purpose is to solve some puzzles and figure out where to go, and of course there's a boss at the end of each area, and after you kill that boss, you get to unlock a new area and that's how you progress through the game. And there are some townspeople that you get to talk to as well. Now the fact that this game has a top-down view, it kind of reminds you of Zelda with a gun and also with a horror setting. So you can capture up to 99 monsters each time, and when you go back to the master, you feed your weapons to give it EXP or even some elemental attacks. And once you feed the monster to the guns, and that's how you clear up some of the captures. And you get a power meter which allows you to make a certain amount of attacks. Of course, when the power meter is all gone, you can't attack until it goes up a little bit. And there's lots of secrets to find and you get to develop new weapons by finding seeds. And I find a lot of them to be very tricky to find sometimes, so anyways, that's all I have to say about the gameplay. So it is indeed an action RPG, but just you don't get the level up, it's the guns that get the level up. So now, let's take a look at the controls, and all I have to say here is that they are pretty good for the most part. So walking, shooting, switching your weapons, that's all very easy to understand. Now, the only complaint I do have with the controls in this game is that I do find that the walking in this game does feel a little bit too sensitive for my liking. And I think it also has to do with the fact that your character moves very fast because sometimes trying to shoot some of these enemies can be a little bit tricky to get used to. Especially when you're trying to make diagonal shots, those can be kind of annoying at times. But other than that, they are fairly responsive and everything else works just fine. So with that being said, the controls do work pretty well, but I do find that the moving can get some time to get used to. Now let's move on to other things like the graphics, and all I have to say here is that I freaking love the graphics within this game. I find everything is very nice and bright looking and it's easy to tell what's what in this game. And of course, I really like the dark style to the game, which suits awesomely. And you do get a very good variety of monsters to fight, so of course you get your typical zombies, bats, skeletons, mummies, but you also get some blue knights, some red knights, and you get some rock monsters. There's like a whole lot of other stuff. So there is definitely a variety and more than just a generic, typical Halloween-related things. 
but even then, the sprites are very well detailed. And a lot of the weapons in this game are pretty crazy looking, which I like. So overall, all I have to say here is that the graphics in this game are pretty awesome for Neo Geo Pocket Color. So now, as for the music within this game, I think it's great. So as to be expected, the music sounds really dark, which suits the game very well. So there's not a whole lot of detail I can say about the music, but for the most part, I do find it to be very well composed and I really like it a lot. But one thing that is unfortunate is that in case you're wondering why the music within this video doesn't sound very Neo Geo Pocket Color-ish, that has to do with the fact that I cannot find the OST on YouTube or any site or anything about this game. It kinda sucks, but I did manage to find the music for the Beast Buster arcade game, so I figured that might as well work enough, right? So it's unfortunate that you won't be able to hear it within this review, but maybe one day someone will rip the OST from the game itself, but we'll have to see about that. But anyways, I just think the music in this game is pretty great. So now, if you want to buy this game, I was actually very surprised when I looked up some prices on this game, but this game is actually very cheap and affordable. So usually the game's price is usually about $10, $15, sometimes even $25, but for the most part it's usually between $10 and $15, which I think is actually really good considering this is a game on a very obscure handheld. And I only saw two copies that were complete in box and they were $70, one of them was a Japanese version though. But if you just want a cart only, then the game is very cheap and affordable, which is actually a very good thing. Although I have never seen this game in person before, then again, I don't think I've ever really seen a Neo Geo Pocket Color in person. Well, I think I might have seen the handheld once before, but that was it. I don't think I've ever seen any of the games before. But I'm sure if there's a store in your area that has a whole bunch of Neo Geo Pocket Color games, then there might be a good chance that this game might be in that pile. But if you can't find the game and you really want to play it, then at least there is emulation for that. And thankfully, the emulator for Neo Geo Pocket Color games are very easy to use. So no matter which way you're playing the game, as long as you're playing it, then that's all that counts. So now, as for my overall thoughts on the game, I think this is actually a pretty enjoyable action RPG with a horror setting. Now yes, the story within this game is probably the worst part of the game, but if you don't care about the story and you just want to get in there and get some action going on, then yeah, this game is definitely really fun. And I found the walking within this game is very sensitive, which can be a little bit of an annoyance, but like I said, once you get used to it, it's pretty much not a problem. But everything else about the game is fairly different, and of course, it's done pretty well and I really like that a lot. And it's a shame that the Neo Geo Pocket Color was not a huge success because it seems like it does have some pretty good games going for it. And if I say so myself, I can definitely recommend this game if you do have a Neo Geo Pocket Color. Or if you just enjoy mindless fun action RPGs. With a few puzzle elements and of course this game is also pretty challenging at times. So with that being said, I definitely really enjoyed this one. So now let's end things here. So, thanks for watching and commenting and have yourselves a great day.